Welcome back folks. I thought I'd use this Ugly Ride video as kind of a background for sharing my thoughts and my history regarding gear and safety. I come at this a little differently than a lot of folks. Uh, I guess I'm kind of coming to the same results but from a different angle. My background includes a lot of time working as a safety director at a hazmat company that had a when I started there, not so great track record for people getting hurt. Not major events, but kind of a, you know, muscle injuries, workplace, just general wear and tear. The goal was to turn that around. My mandate was to turn it around and build a safety culture that would last. Now, one of the key things you learn while doing that kind of work, and I think this is true of any, any environment, it's less about the hardware, more about the software. Namely, most safety issues start by somebody doing something stupid. Uh, they really shouldn't have done it. They knew better. They were taking a shortcut. They were going beyond their abilities. They didn't want to get help, whatever it was. So it's only after the person has gone beyond their abilities or done something they should not have done that safety gear can come into play to mitigate the damage. This is the same in motorcycling. Eventually, if you are riding at the limits or beyond your skill level, something will happen where you do not have the skill to deal with what just happened. You go down. This is where your safety gear comes into play. I've watched a lot of different motorcycle videos related to education. Different instructors, different courses, different philosophies, and one of the things that nearly every single one of these guys says whether they're talking about racing, they're talking about street riding, they're talking about dirt riding, the key to minimizing your accidents is to increase your skill level above your risk level, or put another way, to ride at, at a level that does not exceed your skill level. So I ride very conservatively, very defensively, and I let that little voice in the back of my head saying, what if, have free reign when it comes to other drivers or the road hazards, because well, I'm a new rider, I am not that great, and I want to make sure I stay as much as I can within the limits of my abilities. So I am my own best piece of safety gear. The rest is for when that first part fails. Now, countering the software focus of this is the awareness that, well, bleep does happen. And yes, that's, that's me bleeping. Sometimes there's just nothing you can do about it. You are the victim of circumstances. This is where I think the gear plays the biggest role and why I tend more toward the AKAT side than squid side, but I'm realistic about it. There are two reasons I wear protective gear in general, because I'm doing something where I might mess up and hurt myself, and because I'm doing something where I'm exposed to somebody else messing up and getting me hurt. They might not hit me, but they might do something that causes me to react in a way that I am not good enough to accomplish. You know, maybe there's gravel on the road that, you know, I swerved into, there's sand, you know, maybe I just couldn't stop in time. The gear is there after you've run out of skill. And it's, its job is not to keep you safe. It won't keep you safe. You're going to get hurt. If you go down, you're going to get hurt. Now, maybe it's minor, maybe it's not. But the gear mitigates some of the injury, hopefully. You know, you gotta, you got to base how much gear on what you're doing. In town... Eh, my minimum comfort level in my town, I live in a small town with relatively low speeds, minimum hazards, traffic is pretty courteous, uh, and there's not really a ton of it. To me, the gloves and the helmet and the real shoes of some sort are kind of core. I am slowly replacing my pants that I wear day to day with riding pants. Uh, when I commute to work, I always wear riding pants because I'm getting on the highway. Uh, or at least I'm going on frontage road, which is 55 or so miles an hour, I want that slide protection. I, I will take the hit, but I don't want my skin getting ripped off. So, yeah, riding pants. Uh, I'm slowly just replacing all of my normal day-to-day -day pants with them. I'm still shopping for a protective shirt and hoodie uh, for when a jacket is not really what I want. I will get to that in a minute. I'm not saying I'm always going to wear one. I'm not saying I'm always going to wear protective pants. I would rather just work it into my life rather than not have it. Now, specifically, what am I looking at for gear? You've seen most of what I've got right now. 
I am looking at a Merlin Hamlin hoodie. I'm also looking at the Revit Spark Air, but honestly, I think that's a little too techy looking. Uh, it looks fancier, I guess, than the Merlin, which looks like a kind of standard hoodie. And I just picked up some Dainese riding shoes that were on sale at Revit. So, ha, if you needed my size, I might have bought the last pair. And those are kind of going to double as my day-to-day -day sneakers. That's, that's my goal, is that I wanted to constantly change in and out of the riding shoes for just casual riding. And I'm also looking for some more summer weight gloves, because let's face it, this is Texas. Summer is like three quarters of the damn year. I have one pair of lightweight gloves, and then I've got my winter gloves. I'm going to need more. Uh, I just haven't figured out what I'm going to get. I would like something other than what I've got just to try other things. Uh, I'm also replacing more and more of my pants, like I said, but I need more lightweight riding jeans. The Revit riding jeans are pretty heavy weight. Uh, when it starts getting hot here, they're going to be too much. So probably another pair of the Riding Culture jeans, probably another pair of Reacts 267s, and I'll see what else I can find. And I do want to buy a pair of khakis, preferably nicer looking ones, not cargo style, for, you know, if I go out. Uh, you know, if I, if I go out to a, a bar or a restaurant or something and jeans are just not appropriate, which is pretty rare in my life, but it happens. So, that is it. Uh, the only other thing I've got is if anybody knows a source for an actual long sleeve t-shirt with abrasion protection, give me a shout. There used to be one from Street and Steel, I think. Uh, with black, gray, kind of looked like the thing uh, Adult Softball League would be wearing. Uh, that was on Revzilla last year or a little over a year ago. And I am freaking kicking myself. They had them on sale for 100 bucks, And as a minimum layer, like I'm going fishing kind of thing, you know, like just something. It would be awesome. Uh, where you don't want to add another layer to your life. Because let's face it, this is Texas. I, I live in Texas, it's South Texas even. There's going to be a good chunk of the year where convincing me to add a layer for low-speed riding is going to be awful tough. And if I can bake that in, so to speak, a minimum level of protection, I would rather do that. Because otherwise, I'm taking off a hoodie and leaving it with the bike. And hoping that it doesn't get blown away, that it doesn't get stolen. Like, you know, you're just you're increasing the hassle. But such is life. Uh, I'll figure it out. So anyway, if you know of anywhere to get those, uh, give me a shout. I would definitely want one. If not, oh well, we'll see what happens.